My name is Jeff Sullivan and I'm with the Optum Data Studio Enablement Team. In the previous video, we talked a little bit about the usual suspects on what would happen and, and what would cause performance is, issues in the DB2 for LUW system. We're now going to turn our attention on how these would be manifested or shown. Let's review first from the first video uh, what we just previously discussed. We talked a little bit in terms of uh, the what of organic growth and the fact that with organic growth uh, this is where a system over time is going to grow and we would usually see this in terms of data growth. The second area is server new workload and we can see server new workload where there would be new instances or new applications added to the system. The third would be change system, and this could be either a systematic change, that is a change to something like the underlying operating system or something changed in the DB2 LUW instance, or it could be an application change such that we're changing the, uh, the way an application would be working, removing the functionality or possibly changing the way SQL would be, uh, would be operating. Next item is we talked a little bit about SQL spikes. And with SQL spikes, what we're talking about here would be a one-off situation where an SQL somehow got into the system. If, if this was happening on a regular basis, I wouldn't call this a spike. I would call this business as usual, which means that we would come back again to what changed in the system because more likely it was something that was either caused here or if it was new workload, it could have happened here. If it's spiking the system, that means that we didn't plan for it. Uh, the fifth uh, area would be asleep at the wheel. This would be the aspect of not doing adequate run stats, not doing reorgs on a regular basis, and so on. And finally, we talk a little bit about the unplanned outages. And when we talk about unplanned outages, what we're saying here would be uh, situations where we haven't really paid much attention to these other items above here, and it led to this. So now let's talk a little bit now about how you would find these uh, these types of, of uh, situations. The way to start this though is to understand that in terms of collecting data you really need to have a good warehouse to be able to collect this data. So some of the things that you would want to be looking at if you were to uh, know how or, or, or some of the things to look at in terms of a, of a warehouse is we want to really know what kind of activity we have in the system. When we talk about activity, what are we talking about here? It could be table activity. We want to take a look also at, uh, at, at the table space in terms of that activity. We'd also like to take a look at what indexes and that activity is, is being used. And we would also want to look at buffer pool activity. All of these areas are going to give us a little bit of an insight in terms of overall what's happening. Now, uh, understand something a little bit about performance. We don't look at one causal factor because it usually isn't one causal factor. Now, there might be one cause that might put it over the edge, but it's usually a sum summation of a number of issues that lead up to that uh, what you would call the proverbial uh, straw that, that sends it over the edge. So uh, this is some of the areas that we would look at in terms of the activity. Other things I might take a look at in terms of activity would be uh, overall file system. And this would be trying to see how much is, is being used over time. Do I see something where it goes up in terms of the file system drops off, goes up, drops off, goes off? Do I have something like this? Or do I have something where it's just growing up over time? This is something that needs to be watched and determined in terms of the, of the performance warehouse that you would be using. Now, other things that you would also want to look at would also be the uh, what I call the synchronous and asynchronous issue. Now, as you probably might guess, in DB2, you really want to maximize things in asynchronously. This is kind of a uh, more of a rule of thumb than anything else. 
But you want to maximize your asynchronous activity, you want to decrease your synchronous activity. Synchronous, for lack of better terms, is, is usually when DB2 has to drop something or, or has to uh, uh, stop doing a particular activity, drop was probably the wrong word, uh, in order to be able to uh, fill the activities of, of what work is being requested of it. For example, if I had, didn't have adequate space in the uh, buffer pool, and I had a demand for, uh, let's say, a table space scan, and that work is coming in. What DB2 is going to have to do is, is clear out space in order to make this happen. More than likely, the I.O. that's going to take place is going to be synchronous. And if that's the case, that's where uh, you would have something here where you would, where you would want to be able to zero in on that kind of activity that's, that's occurring with that. Now, uh, with synchronous activity, some of the th things that you might also want to take a look at is, is page cleaning operations. Uh, page cleaning, um, if, if you don't know, is the idea of being able to externalize the updated or, or uh, dirty pages, if you will, in the buffer pool. So you want to also take a look at page cleaning. Uh, let's see, other exceptions uh, that, that you might want to take a look at is uh, as you're looking at all of this, when I was showing you that chart earlier, when we were seeing spikes or anything like that, what I would really want to know is what time is this occurring? Because this is going to tell me whether or not we have possibly something else that's happening in the system. We might want to be looking for some sort of a rogue uh, script, for example, that might be running out there. Or we might have some, something that's, that's just uh, not really running at, at uh, quite the right time. Other things to look at is we might also want to take a look at the connection pool. Again, we're looking at all this stuff over time because this is the, the whole purpose of the activity is to be able to see what's happening in the system and if we can correlate this and, and watch all this stuff and get a feel for how the system normally runs and then when the exceptions occur, you already have your, what you would say, your usual suspects of DB2 objects to be able to look at. Other things to look at would be the reorg uh, and run stats uh, uh, timestamps. When did they happen? Uh, let's see. Other things that you might want to take a look at would be uh, your sort pool. So I'm going to put that up here. This would be uh, in terms of the sort pool. Uh, I might want to know in terms of uh, how much activity is occurring on the, on, the, on the sort pool? Do I have a high level of sorts, or is it low? So I'm also going to be wanting to look at that, that uh, sort memory as well. Um, I also want to take a look at indexes and their usage, and uh, this, is, this, is, this again is usage, as compared to the tables that they work with. And what we're looking for here is we're trying to get a feel for the usage of the indexes with the tables. Do we have, uh, because this is not going to correlate back to buffer pools, it's also going to correlate back to synchronous and asynchronous operations. What we're looking for here would be table space scans. Now ultimately with all of this, we're trying to take all of this and correlate it back to uh, SQL. Now the idea that we have a spike or we talk about spikes, what we're trying to do is, is we're trying to get a feel for our system here and determine do we really have an SQL spike or is this something that, is, that would be part of a new change system? And you kind of get the idea here, and you should already, that we have a lot of things that are all correlated together. And that is the, the principal goal in terms of how you would do uh, performance tuning. And this is what I usually teach when I talk about performance, is you want to look at everything and you want to compare them. Don't focus on one item. Never focus on one item. You want to look at all of it and look at the system in a holistic view. Then you can make the determination of how to go about solving the problem.